Our community classroom with Michaels. Uh, we're so excited to be here today to with um, Seema, and we will be learning the. Let me actually read the real pattern name. Oh my goodness! It's You're, a mini triangle knit bunting. There we go. Perfect. Seema's got it. Um, we're so excited to be here today. So we have Seema teaching the class. And then we also have uh, Nicole, who is also from the Yarnspirations design team. And she's going to be helping out with um, some of your questions today. So feel free to let us know at any time throughout the class if you have any questions. And we'll make sure to get those answered. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Yeah, we'll give everyone like 25, 30 seconds more to join. Uh, in the meanwhile, this is what we'll be working on today. It's a work in progress shot. Um, so get get your yarn ready if you wanna work alongside us. We've, we're using Lily Sugar and Cream, which is a worsted weight. It's a CYC weight four cotton. Let's see if it'll, it won't focus. But this is the yarn we're using and we're using a 4.5 millimeter or US seven pair of knitting needles and double pointed needles will need to be used for the latter part of the program. So, fun time. We've got Nicole, which I'm really excited about because Nicole has much more knitting experience than me. So if you've got questions, <laughs> pop them in the chat. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks. <laughs> Allie, do you think we're good to go? I think so. And um, I'm just going to drop the pattern into the chat for anybody that didn't get it ahead of time. So look out for that as well. Perfect. And uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, why don't we switch to hands and I can talk through the pattern. Perfect. So what we've got here is I've just printed out um, the PD PDF of the pattern. Um, we're working on the Lily Sugar and Cream Mini Triangle Knit Bunting, as we mentioned. So the reason actually we suggested this pattern, it's really cute little way of, I've noticed a lot of really cute at home celebrations that people are having during this time. And you can add a little festive touch to wherever you are. And because it's not marked up with any sort of lettering or, or whatever, you can keep it out and just have it wherever you, you, know, you knit or crochet or whatever craft you do. Um, for the materials, we've got Lily Sugar and Cream. Um, so you can see this particular pattern uses a lot of colors because each of the triangles, um, you know, we've switched up the colors, but you can kind of use whatever combination you want. Like if you want two colors to do an alternating design, or if you want to do chunks of like all green, all red, that sort of thing, you can definitely do that. But if you want the look that's in the pattern, definitely check out the list of colors here. Um, as mentioned, you'll need US 7 4.5 knitting needles. So you can use circulars or, or straight needles for the knitting the triangles, but for the actual cord that we've got here called an eye cord, you will need a pair of double pointed knitting needles. So you only need two, these usually come in packs of four, but you can see it's really important that it's got a point on both ends. You can slide your stitches back and forth. Um, aside from that, you'll need a tapestry needle. So something with a big enough eye that you can thread your um, yarn through as well. Um, I am using a little pin um, just to mark my right side because I was working on this late at night and got confused. So I thought that may be a little helpful thing for you to see after and of course, uh, scissors because there's a lot of cutting of your yarn with this particular project um, and yeah we'll get started you'll notice the project is marked easy so you definitely need to have knit before um, definitely wouldn't recommend this for your first project but if you're wanting to like you know how to do garter stitch and you know how to cast on you'll be completely fine with this project um, and as Ali mentioned or I'm not sure she has yet, this will be available on the Michaels YouTube channel after if you want to rewatch. And we're pretty sure this pattern, um, so all of our patterns, uh, you know, unless it's marked, have been designed by the Yarn Inspirations design team. And in this case, we're pretty sure it's our colleague, Emily Burney, who has really adorable patterns. Um, so that's what I'm working with today. So to start, um, definitely take some time to figure out what color order or sequence you want your triangles to be in beforehand. You know, you can doodle or whatever. Um, 
But in this case, I'm just going to start and you can follow along if you've got some yarn um, for a sample. And I had a little diagram here just to show essentially what you're doing is you're making a series of triangles that are all connected. Um, you start here with two stitches and you work increases so that your you know, triangle starts forming this left angle here. And then you work some decreases and that's all there is to it. Um, and then the I chord at the end is really fun because it gives it a bit of structure and it allows you to hang it on something. So I'm going to grab my yarn. I'm working with, I don't remember the exact color of Lily Sugar and Cream, but it's one of the brighter peachy pink tones. So hopefully you can see that on camera. Um, I'm going to start with a cast on of two stitches. So slip knot as always. And you can cast on using whatever method you prefer for two stitches. So we've got two on our needle there. And we're going to start with our right side row. Pretty straightforward. We're just going to knit that first row. And then we'll turn our work and we're going to knit to the last stitch. So in this case, we just need to knit this first stitch here. And then it says KFB, which if you've never seen before, means to knit into the front and back of the next stitch. Um, so this is a form of increasing. So this one stitch on our left here is going to become two. So to do that, you're going to insert your needle into the front of the stitch like you normally would. Wrap your yarn around the needle pull through, but don't slide it off the left hand needle yet. You're actually going to take your needle and insert it into the back of that stitch like that. Wrap your yarn around it, pull through, except I've split my yarn, so we need to do that again. We're knitting into the back here. Pull through, so you've got three, and then you slide off. So we'll demonstrate that a few more times in case you haven't seen that before, but that's the second row. And you can start to see we've added a stitch. So now the pattern says we're going to repeat those last two sets of instructions until we've got eight stitches on our needle. So here we're going to knit these three stitches. And then for the second row that we're repeating, we're going to knit to the last stitch so knit one, knit two, and then in this last stitch, we're working that KFB or knit front and back again. So inserting into the stitch, wrapping our yarn around it, pulling through, but not sliding off the left hand needle, and then working into the back of the stitch like that, wrapping our yarn around the needle, pulling through and sliding off. So we've got four stitches on our needle. So I'm going to keep doing that, uh, knitting one row and then knitting to the last stitch um, and then knitting front and back until I have eight stitches. So this is the knit row. And then this is the increase row. Nicole, are you working on uh, one of these triangles as well? Um, I'm going to. I'm on the last row of a swatch that I'm knitting for some, something else, but it is Lily and Sugar and Cream, so I, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna, to... It's just like getting through my last row. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to mention, so for, I don't know why, my first triangle, maybe I wasn't really paying attention earlier, but I find it helpful if you want to mark your right side because with garter stitch, you can get, it's easy to confuse the two. So um, if you want, you can just put a little marker on your right side so you don't forget. And that'll help you when you're weaving in your ends to know that you won't want to always knit or weave those in on the wrong side. So I'm going to knit this one. I'd love to know what color combos are going to use for their 
garlands and for what purposes? Like birthdays or weddings, anniversaries, just fun. Mm -hmm. I love um, that you said at the beginning, like a lot of people are having celebrations at home these days and this is, it's a really easy way to set it up. Yeah. A party at home. Exactly. Okay, so I've got six stitches, so I'm just gonna work two more or four more rows until I have eight stitches on this needle. Knit across. And then knit to the last stitch. And then knit front and back again. So anyone who needs a quick look at that again. Seven stitches. And now we're going to work, you know, we have seven here. So when we increase in this last one, we'll have the eight stitches that we want. And of course, if you wanted these to be bigger, you could just keep repeating these rows. Um, it'll just change the quantity of yarn you need. Yeah, I guess you could make each triangle as big or as small as you wanted, and you could make this as long as you wanted too. So really make it your own. Yeah, and I was thinking um, if you use one of like the variegated or stripy versions of lily sugar and cream, like you, if you don't want to change colors and you just want to keep going. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so here I've stopped because I've got eight stitches on my needle, which is the maximum height for this particular pattern. Um, so now it says the next row, we're going to uh, knit that. So I'll just knit across on the right side. And then on this side of our work, we're going to knit to the last two stitches. So until we get to here, and then we're going to join these stitches. So we're going to knit the, these two together. So knit the first six stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six and then these last two stitches to knit two together you're going to insert your needle as if to knit through both of those stitches on the front there so let's see if we can get in close there so insert from front to back through both of those stitches as if they're one wrap the yarn around your needle as usual pull through and slide off so what we've done there is you can already see that that creates a right leaning decrease. So it's creating that point in the opposite direction. So in the diagram, we're right about here. Um, I, love, I love having a map. Yeah. <laughs> you need to know where I'm going. Um, and now we're going to just repeat those last two rows. So we'll knit on the right side as we were before. And then on this side, we'll knit again to the last two stitches. And knit those two stitches together as if they're one. 
So inserting from front to back through both of them, through that front loop, and then wrapping the yarn around the needle, pulling it through, and then sliding it off. And now we're down to six stitches. So we're going to keep doing those last two rows until we've got two stitches left. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop those into the chat. Nicole, have you seen many drive-by celebrations in your neighborhood? Uh, a few, yeah. And um, the woman across me, the road from me, she must have been celebrating a very big birthday milestone because she had her whole family singing to her on the sidewalk a couple weeks ago. It was really cute. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. How about you? Um, yeah, so two of my family members drove by yesterday with a banner on their car, actually. Aww. Um, <laughs> my husband's birthday yesterday. Ah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, both my daughter and I had quarantine birthdays and it's actually I felt like I got uh I was more social than normal. So as you can see here, I've got five stitches on my needle and I'm continuing to repeat those two rows. So I just worked a knit row and I'm going to knit to the last two stitches and knit these last two together. So we've got four stitches. Knit these four. And we'll knit the last two again. Knit one, two, we have two stitches left. We'll knit two together. So we've got three stitches left, almost there. If anyone wants to share what color combos they're thinking about doing for their bunting, I'd love to know. So we've got two stitches here. We'll knit these two together. And there we've got two stitches left on our needle. Um, so at this point, it says to break the yarn and join the next color. So because I'm going to be rotating colors for every triangle, I'm going to cut my yarn. I usually like to leave about a six inch tail. You can probably get away with a bit less for this project because it's so small and it's not like a wearable or blanket. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear, but I find it helpful to have a good length to weave in later. And now we're going to um, join our new color. So. I'm going to, oh, I didn't choose a color beforehand. This is why you should think about it beforehand. Uh, let's choose a color you can actually see. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go with gray. <laughs> Let me find <laughs> the, this center here. And for anyone who doesn't know, you can really dig for the center. You can just pull off the ball band and pull from the outer, which I might do for today for the sake of time. <laughs> um, so to join a new color, essentially you leave that tail hanging. If it seems a bit loose, we'll clean that up later when we're weaving in the ends, but you insert your needle as if you were going to knit normally and you just wrap the new color around your needle and then insert your needle into the next stitch to knit. And just make sure that you're working with the side that's attached to the ball and not your tail end. So we've got two there and it does seem a bit loose, but you can kind of tug at the ends there and it'll be fine once we keep working. So the instructions say to repeat um, 
Do, do, do. You'll see the asterisks on the pattern from the double star to the double star. So we're just going to start again with the knit row and then the increase rows until we have eight stitches and then we're going to decrease until we're back to two stitches. And after we've worked through this second triangle, I'm going to show you how to make the I cord um, edging. So. We will knit to the last stitch and knit front and back. It's been loose. I started my triangle, Seema. <laughs> Yay, Nicole. <laughs> With the green? Yes. <laughs> so we've got three stitches there and we'll knit across on the right side. My room has gotten really hot. One thing I was thinking about our colleague Emily normally has, often has a little desk fan at her work desk. <laughs> I could do with that. <laughs> uh, so again, at the last stitch, we're going to knit into the front and the back. So we've got four stitches on our needle. Then we'll knit across again. I was just thinking, actually, knitting with cotton is nice when it's hot because sometimes um, my hands get too sweaty when I'm working with something like fuzzy or or woolly. So this cotton feels nice in the summer. Yes. It's the perfect heat wave uh, project. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and because it's small, it's not resting on your lap. Yes. <laughs> Outside or something. So again, knitting to the last two or last stitch, knit front and back. Um, we got some comments in the uh, chat about what colors people are using. There's red, white, and blue for the Fourth of July. That's a great a great idea. I imagine that that would look really really cute. Um, and then uh, another uh, stitcher, we got school colors, orange and purple for a Clemson graduation. Oh yeah, there's been a lot of um, <laughs> remote graduations as well, so that's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I feel in these times, it's important to celebrate anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. You can make a, ban a bunting for anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually plan on finishing the one I started, so I don't know what I'll just put it up. Yeah, well, actually, um, Kim says you could use it in a Zoom meeting when you're teaching online. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Maybe for the next class, if I get it done, I'll put it up. <laughs> And for anyone who's joining us for the first time, we run uh, classes for knitting pretty much weekly now and crochet weekly. Um, so be sure to sign up. It's on michaels.com slash classes. And if you have any ideas for things that you want to see, uh, we love, love the feedback. So feel free to leave us a comment in the chat. So as you can see, I'm just continuing to do those increases. I'm up to seven stitches. So one more increase row. There's a suggestion, orange and black for Halloween or fall colors for Thanksgiving or Christmas colors. And I think actually I am doing my triangle in like a dark green because it's what I have, but I might look around for some more uh, holiday colors because that is, I, this would look cute on the tree. Like it's just small enough. You can yes, put it anywhere. So cute. So we'll knit front and back. 
and count to make sure that we got our eight stitches, which we do. Um, so now we'll knit the next row and then work those decreases again. So I'm gonna do this part a little quicker, I think, so that I can show you the I chord, because if you haven't worked an I chord before, it seems a little weird, but then it's very satisfying <laughs> once you have, because I don't know, something about forming the 3D tube. Oh yeah. It makes such a nice, nice, neat edging on the top of the bunting. I love, um, I love I chord too, Seema. <laughs> <laughs> These are the things that knitters get really excited about. <laughs> So I'm beginning those decrease rows and you can see, I'm just gonna lay it flat for a second. Um, you've hit that point and now we're gonna start angling right again with the knit two together, worked every other row on the last stitch. And it's really as easy as that. And once you've figured out most like a basic shawl pattern or something usually involves maybe one or two other types of increases, but it's a really nice way to see that, hey, you can make more than a rectangle or a square. Like suddenly got a triangle, which could lead to anything. Yeah. <laughs> All about the possibilities right now, Nicole. Yes. <laughs> I'm here for it. So again, knitting to the last stitch, or last two stitches, sorry, and then knitting these two together front to back through both, wrap the yarn around, pull through, slide off. And as soon as we get to the last two stitches, I'll pretend that this is the last triangle so that you can see what the next steps are. We did have um, somebody asking to get shown KFB once, once again slowly, but I don't know if you're at a point where that's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'll, I'll show it and then I'll just undo it. So okay. anyone who's watching, we're doing a knit front and back just for demonstration. Don't actually do this. <laughs> so you insert your needle from front to back through the stitch as if you, would knit, you were knitting it. You wrap the yarn around the needle, pull through, but you see we're not sliding it off the left hand needle. We're just going to move our right hand needle point it through the back of the stitch. So you can see that each stitch has a loop and we're calling this part hanging on the back here, the back of that stitch. Wrap the yarn through, pull through, and you've got two and slide off. Mm -hmm. so it's a KFB. Yeah. Um, I'll demo it one more time so if someone's got it. And so, right. Sorry. Yeah, perfect. So you're just making two stitches from one stitch by knitting into the front, keeping it on the needle and then knitting into the back. And then you got two, and then you slide both of them off. So you've made two where was where there was once one. Yes. <laughs> and definitely, um, if you need a refresher after the class, um, it'll be up on YouTube and one of the great things about looking at those videos is you can pause and also um, speed up or slow down when yes. you get parts. Once I discovered the speed feature on. Yeah, <laughs> that was a, that's a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I wondered how long it existed before I realized it was there. <laughs> so we're almost through our decrease rows. We're getting so many inspiring color ideas that it's making me want to do a little stash dive. We got uh, red and white for Alabama, Crimson Tide, or rainbow one, which would be amazing. I think rainbow with little white eye cord on it. Uh, pastels for a baby shower, wedding colors for bridal. So pretty. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Especially with Lily sugar and cream, like if you have any, like you've made dishcloths or something and you have leftovers, 
Yes, yes. Oh. There is a comment too saying that this is a great project for leftovers and oh, look at the bunting and remember all the fun projects you've made. That's oh, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Almost there, everyone. Knit two together on that last stitch. So we've got three stitches left here. I'm going to knit across these three. And then I'm going to knit to the last two stitches here and knit two together. And I'm going to pretend that this is the last triangle I'm working just so I can show you the next steps. So we've knit two together. We have two stitches left and you'll cast off. Um, I don't think it really matters what method you use. I'm just gonna use a simple one where you knit the stitches and then pull the right stitch over the left. So I'll knit this one, second stitch here. Then I'll pull the stitch over the one on the left. Except I've done that a little loosely because I'm holding it in the air, but you get the idea. And I'm going to cut that tail. One thing I do recommend, mainly so it doesn't get tangled in your bag, is that you weave in the ends for the triangles, every couple of triangles. Um, you don't have to, but it might make it a bit less tangled. I just carried mine around in a bag yesterday and it got a little, little mm -hmm. crazy in there. So as you can see here, I've got two triangles. Um, the pin I put down so I could tell that this is the right side, which means that I'm going to want to weave in the ends on the wrong side. Um, it, you really won't notice it that much, but if you do it all on the wrong side, it'll just make sure that you've got a nice clean front. So I know the last time I did a class, there were a lot of questions about weaving in. So I'll do a little quick demo. I've got my tapestry needle here. I'm going to start at the bottom and thread my needle. And you're essentially going to work in and out of the stitches on the wrong side. Um, because it's a garment, or it's not a garment, and it's not a home decor item that you're probably going to be washing a ton, usually I would recommend, you know, weaving in a good anywhere from three to five inches of your tail if you really want to be super secure, but for something like this, you could probably just do a couple stitches in either direction and you'd be fine. Um, so I'm going to insert my needle and just essentially glide it in and out of those bumps that the garter stitch forms. And as long as you're not bringing it through to the right side, you should be fine. It doesn't need to be perfection, I think unless you want it to be, then of course. Okay. So I would maybe go for another stitch or two, but when you're done, you just cut off the tails there. And then for the ones where the color join happens, before you weave in the ends, I would just make sure that you like how it's laying. And if you need to, you can tug at the yarn ends to get them to lie flat. Um, but yeah, just make sure you weave in on the side, you know, on the color, the background color of the yarn you're using. That'll just help make things neat and tidy. Um, there's a question in the chat about uh, what's the purpose of double pointing needle, double pointed needles and one point. So I can just answer that really briefly uh, while you're weaving in your ends. So in this um, instance, so the, the pieces that seem as knitting are pretty small. So double pointed needles, um, there's no real difference between what they do. Double pointed needles are handy for working in the round. Uh, instead of a circular needle, if you have a, something in a smaller circumference. Uh, Double-pointed needles help. 
I like to use them if I'm knitting something little flat. I just use two double pointed needles because they're not as long as um, usual straight needles. And I don't know, maybe I don't want to deal with the cord of a circular. Um, and in this project, after the ends are woven in, there's an I-cord edging at the top and you need double pointed needles for that because it's a really cool technique of, of knitting um, from one side of the needle and then pushing it aside to the other side and knitting from the other side. So you have a point on each end so you can kind of knit, knit both ends. <laughs> Yes, sounds, sounds complicated, but it's not. <laughs> yes. And you know what? We're going to demo it right now. So it's all good. I'm going to pretend that I've woven in all my ends. And essentially, we're creating, we're going to learn how to do this cord that you see here. Mm -hmm. um, so grab your double pointed needles and the color yarn that you want to use for your. Um, oh, I just realized I've got to cut this. Sorry. I think we can see that. Yeah, seems yeah. all right. I uh, can see it. <laughs> good. Uh, so the instructions for the bunting or the cord itself are on the second page of the pattern. So we're going to make our slip knot and cast on three stitches. So in any way you prefer. So I've got three stitches on my needle and instead of usually you would turn your work and then just work across, you're not going to do that. You're going to slide these three stitches to the right hand side of your needle and then you're going to knit the next three stitch, these three stitches and you're pulling your yarn across the back. So it'll kind of make sense once you've done a few rows, but I will knit these three and you're never turning your work to the other side. So once I've knit these three, oops, well, that's not what you want to do, but we'll <laughs> you'll slide these three stitches to the other end of the needle and knit this again. And again, you're taking the tail and pulling it across and that kind of helps cinch this together to form a tube. We're going to do this for, the pattern says to do it for two inches, so we'll do it for a little bit so you can see. Again, slide across, knit those three, and you can already see it starting to take take shape there. And slide across again. And you'll essentially keep doing that until you get the desired length before you join it to the bunting. So it's the pattern calls for two inches, just so you've got enough to hang it off of. But then this portion that's attached to the triangle is worked a bit differently. So work this portion for as long as you, you need it to be. Two inches will suffice for, like if you've got a simple hook. And Instead of when you're ready to join it to your triangle, you don't um, slide it to the opposite end of your double pointed needles yet. You leave it right on that left hand side of the needle. And then you take your triangles and you start um, with the last triangle that you made on the right side facing up. So this is the last triangle that I made. And essentially I'm going to pick up stitches along this left hand or this edge here to join it with the um, cord. So to do that, you're going to insert your needle. Typically um, for this, I'm gonna suggest you pick up stitches for every time you see one of these garter stitch bumps, but you might need more or less depending 
on how tightly your triangles have been worked. So to start, all I'm doing when you're picking up a stitch is you're inserting your needle um, from front to back through a portion of the work along the edge and wrapping the yarn that's attached to the eye cord that's on your needle around that needle and pulling through. It's a little finicky the way I'm holding my hands in the air right now, but I'm gonna try that again. You can also use um, a crochet hook if you've got one to help pull it through, or if you're a picker with your yarn, it's a bit easier, I find. So I've just pulled through a loop and I've got four stitches on my needle. So now I'm going to slide these four stitches across to the end. And I'm going to knit the first three stitches. So one, two, oh, actually the first two stitches, sorry. And then we're going to knit these two stitches together, except it says TBL, which means through the back loop. So it just gives it a bit of a neater finish. So in this case, you're inserting your needle, not through these two from the front, but through the back like this, wrapping your yarn around the needle, pulling through, and I'm just gonna finesse my work here because I've picked up some other stuff. So now we've got three stitches, but we're also attached to that triangle. And you can see why you'd want to weave in your ends first because this is kind of dangling in my way. But we're now going to, instead of sliding right across, every time we um, finish a row here, we want to pick up another stitch. My needles are rolling. Um, so we're going to insert our needle through, I'm using the bumps as a guide, like these vertical lines. Um, Uh, for mine to be a bit more stable, I'm working it through two loops. You could probably get away with one, but I find it a bit more stable working through two strands here. Wrapping the yarn around the needle, pulling it through. So you've got four. Slide these four stitches across to your right hand side of your needle. Knit the first two stitches normally. And then these last two stitches, you're going to knit together, not through the front, but through the back loop. And we'll repeat that process. So again, pick up a stitch. And you can see, so when I only went through one strand, it kind of left me with a bit of a gap or a hole there that I wasn't not super keen on. So you can play with that a bit. I'm going to just work through two strands here. Pull the yarn through. We've got four. And you're going to keep doing that the whole way across the project. Um, so if anyone has any questions about I chords, let us know. <laughs> And again, we're gonna pick up. Now, if you notice that you find that, um, let's say your triangle is starting to get stretched out, then it probably means, I think you need to do more, pick up more stitches. Actually, Nicole, does that make sense? If you are, if it's tightening in? Yes. Yeah, then you should be picking up. I liked your, um, your method the, that you were mentioning, like picking up in every garter ridge, skipping one. Yeah. Feels right. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't need to be super perfect. Like if you notice it looks too tight, then you can play with the frequency at which you're picking up stitches based on how tightly you knit. Um, I also think too, uh, like a lot can be fixed um, by a gentle steaming, especially with cotton. It's really forgiving. So uh, 
like I've seen so many picture or uh, so many projects, um, you know, get off the needles and look kind of wrinkly. But once you give it a good steam, that I cord and the the triangles should should lay pretty flat and nice. Oh, very, so so true. <laughs> So there's uh, a couple people who are fascinated by watching you do the I cord. And um, somebody was mentioning they need to make ties for a baby hat. And yeah, I cord is perfect for, um, I love it for ties on hats or like drawstring maybe in like a little baby pants or something. It's, it's such a, it's such a tidy and versatile thing. And so Seam is using it in, a, and it's called an applied eye cord edging right now. Um, but you can make an eye cord just on its own too by casting on three, four, five stitches, however many, and just knitting um, across and then sliding your stitches back. You don't like, not doing good <laughs> good job explaining, but you don't have to do it applied. This is an applied I cord, but I cord just on its own is is another fascinating. Yeah, like this portion here that we did before right. we did it to the yeah. triangle is essentially exactly. that, right. So yeah. if you could just keep doing this for as long as you wanted for something else. Mm -hmm. I actually um, probably I don't know seven years ago I wanted to get. Uh, some form of knitting into our wedding mm -hmm. and so I knit an I-cord necklace Aww. wool that matched the color of my outfit wool for some ceremony and yeah. yeah it was really fun to have that and I still Aww. have the nice castle at the end it's yeah oh that sounds so beautiful so somebody is asking if there's a way to crochet an I cord. And I know I definitely have seen videos popping up, but I've never personally tried it. Have you? I don't think I have. I feel like I have also seen videos, but not. I don't remember trying it before. Mm -hmm. It sounds really cool though. Yeah. To look it up. And I cord is the same look as uh childhood craft the spool knitting you know the little oh, spool yeah. with the tube and then you corking it's called or tube knitting tricky knitting all that the, it's all the same thing but it gives the same like long knitted uh tube i feel like it's an underrated superstar of knitting <laughs> it really yeah Essentially, that's kind of all there is to this particular pattern. You keep going the whole way along the edge of your project. Um, when you get to the end, you continue without joining to the end of the triangles. So the same way that you did at the start. Um, but yeah, since we've got, got 12 minutes left, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat or ideas for projects we can help out. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, so Michelle's asking, is there a certain yarn material that will stretch out more or less if you use it for drawstring for pants or sweaters? So, um, so if you're talking about using uh, I-cord for a drawstring, um, yeah, like definitely what we're using here, cotton is not going to stretch too much. Any kind of acrylic isn't going to really stretch. Wool wouldn't stretch. Um, yeah, the best thing I think would just to be to like pull the the yarn and see if there's any kind of give to it. I mm -hmm. find that I cord actually does like it's um it's pretty stable. Like it's it's not right. it's not stretchy. So it, it um, just play around with it. You can often just use whatever uh, the same yarn that you're using for the project. You could use for the drawstring. Um, probably be okay with that. Um, a lot of comments saying that they loved learning attached eye cord. <laughs> yes, 
It's really cute on sweater edges too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seema, you make me want to go knit. <laughs> Even though I've been knitting with you. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, yeah. I saw a question here. Uh, is there a way to crochet an eye cord? Oh yes, Nicole was uh, I think flagging that we're not there is I don't neither of us <laughs> happen to know how at the moment <laughs> I actually think have you tried I it think, I out? think I did an eye court last weekend oh. <laughs> I think I I'm gonna have to look right now but um I actually think we have a great tutorial from Marley on it but let me just double check because it might have been something else but it looked very similar and it had that really nice tube effect Hmm. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah, there are literally hundreds of <laughs> tutorial videos that we've, we've got online, so I'm sure. Um, so somebody's asking, what does it look like if you knit the last two stitches in the front instead of the back? Um, the reason why uh, you knit into the front and the back of that last um, Oh, are you talking about what does it in the last two stitches in the front instead of the back? I think they mean when this part here when I'm oh. let's see. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I'll do a couple stitches where we're doing into the front and see what happens. Because I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> So we've pulled up stitches, knitting to the last two. I'm knitting two together and we're testing it out. So I'm knitting through the front <laughs> of both of those stitches. For some reason knitting very tightly. Um, oh, does oh, it make a little bump? bump? What's that? Does it make a little bump or is it okay? I don't I feel like it's less defined. It could be in my head. I'm going to do one more. <laughs> Usually if we've got something in there that's like that, that may seem finicky, it means that one of the designers has spent many minutes or hours <laughs> sort of perfecting, you know, why they've chosen it. But if you don't mind the difference in look, so I noticed these ones here have all been worked in the back loop. These two here have been worked in the uh, front loop. Right. There's something about, you can't really see on camera, but I find the ones that have been knit in the back loop, the cord, it seems more pronounced right. off the okay. edge mm -hmm. versus here, it's kind of a little flatter. Right. Yeah, I can see that. Um, not, again, not super noticeable on camera, but you can always try it out. And if you don't like how it looks and, you know, unravel, mm -hmm. all will be fine. And we've got, you know, just under seven minutes left. So any last questions, uh, happy to help with. And I did want to say, um, I did just drop a link to a tutorial that we have on how to crochet an eye cord. And I did do that last weekend, apparently. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and it is very satisfying. So if you're a crocheter, yeah, <laughs> it's super satisfying. <laughs> and uh, just a reminder to everybody today, I'm just going to drop a link um, here in the chat for where you'll be able to find today's recording. Um, which should be available online tomorrow. Perfect. I'm still doing the knit in the front loop, but for some reason I've now started knitting very tightly. <sighs> Trying to loosen up. Um, I was yeah. just thinking that that I cord might be a good place to hide your ends. Oh 
Oh, Nicole. What? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I think uh, for anyone who's wondering what Nicole is suggesting, let's say we had this tail here that I haven't woven in. Oh, Nicole, this is, <laughs> this is why, you know, we need this conversation. We'll mm -hmm. insert that thread and then do you think we would still need to weave it in or could I just hide it? In no, there? just plop it in there. All right. So very little okay. secret. Nobody has to know. Because it's a tube. Yeah. This is a benefit if you've stuck around. You've <laughs> you can insert the thread into the tube. Mm -hmm. Job than I am, but <laughs> sort of push it through. I left my metal needle downstairs. Might have been better for this, but we'll slide a good amount through, mm -hmm. pull a bit so that it's a little taut so we can hide that end. We'll cut and then flatten it out. And where did that end go? It is <laughs> magically <laughs> hidden in the I cord. And because it's not, a bunting is not something you're going to be laundering mm -hmm. a thousand times, you should be. I love that, Nicole. I'm <laughs> so happy that you share that because now <laughs> I can continue this garland and oh yeah you could all. maybe even work around the ends at the top I don't know like when you're doing the tuck them in as you're going oh yeah yeah I could see that we'll see lots of ideas here everyone I'll check in with you later to see what you did <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I know someone once brought up last week um where should they share their project photos? If you end up making it, like use hashtag uh, make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspirations if you're on Instagram. And uh, we check those out fairly often. So we'll see your, your work and we love to see what people have done after the class. I am just really happy about that suggestion to hide my ends <laughs> <laughs> because it's the only part of a project that I tend to leave. Oh, yeah. I have a couple of sweaters from 10 years ago that still have a couple ends inside. <laughs> <laughs> I left a hat once on my parents' porch, like it fell off, and my mom only knew it was mine and not ready to wear or someone else's because there was a tail hanging <laughs> on the inside, which she has grown to identify me with. That's hilarious. <laughs> I continue doing the front and I, I think it just looks neater when it's through the back and mm -hmm. more pronounced. Uh, that's pretty much the only discernible mm -hmm. and like where the V's sit. Yeah. It's a little more tucked when you work through the back loop. Mm -hmm. It's a good, it was a good experiment though. Yes. <laughs> And we don't know until we try. So, so true. Sorry, Ali. Oh, nothing. I was just um, going to let everybody know that I did drop that link in the chat here for um, where you can find today's recording. And we saw some really great suggestions for future classes. So we'll definitely keep those in mind. A um, couple people suggesting um, mitten or sock classes as a multi-part series, which is a great idea. So we'll definitely um, keep your suggestions in mind going forward. Oh, I'd love that. And then just be sure to check back at um, michaels.com slash online classes to see all of the classes that we have coming up in knit and crochet, as well as all the other types of classes that they have for different crafts. Perfect. So thank you everyone for joining and for Nicole for co-hosting and handling questions and Allie. Awesome. Good My fashion. pleasure. <laughs> Thanks for everyone for joining. Perfect. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.